Welcome everybody, this is Joel Toppin here, designer of Comancheria. And uh, if you're watching this, this is a, a video tutorial. And basically it's going to walk you through the tutorial that ships with the game. And so if you have a copy of the game, you probably want to get the, the game out as you watch this because we're going to walk through the tutorial that uh, comprises most of the playbook. So basically the tutorial has been designed to get you into the game as quickly as possible. And I, I like it to be interactive with the components. So um, you really want to have all the components out with you when you go through the tutorial. So if you haven't done so already, you know, you want to punch out the pieces, sort them. Uh, section 1.3.2 in the rule book will be helpful in sorting out the pieces. It, um, we tried to do a better job in Command Sharia than we did in Navajo Wars with explaining the pieces and what they do. Their function in the game it kind of helps you sort them out so you can jump right into things. Uh, you'll probably note that there's a, a big stack of cards in there, and by the way, if those cards damaged your box, just you know, let GMT know um, that was something that came up, and uh, they're, they're addressing they're addressing the issue. I think what they did in the warehouse was they pulled up, uh, they opened up all the games and, and reallocated uh, how the cards were distributed in the box. So. Um, obviously there's a lot of cards that come with the game. There's several different types. You have development cards. There's 84 of those. Uh, there's four history cards, one for each historic period in the game. There's a deck of war cards, 25 of those. Uh, and there's also a, uh, a bunch of culture cards that are divided up into eight suits of three uh, for a total of 24 uh, culture cards. The development cards are also divided up into groups according to historic period. So how I organized them is I put all of the uh, development cards for historic period one along with the history card for uh, for period one into one bag, and then I put uh, I like to use like the big Ziploc bags for the cards. They hold them real nice, and you can close the box. So that's obviously a benefit. So uh, so that's how I would, I just kind of sort the cards and just kind of get them all out and, and have them all ready at hand. Um, the As far as preparing a place to sit with the game, uh, you just basically need to unfold the map and make sure that there is enough space at hand to uh, lay out cards that are in play, cards that are in hand. I like to keep, uh, like in the Vassal module, we put a strip here at the bottom of the screen where we can put the cards in hand. We're going to start with a horsemanship culture card. So uh, if you're playing at a table, just make sure you have some room for uh, cards that are in hand. Um, we're going to go ahead and just have you set up the game pretty much just like you see on the Vassal screen here. Uh, the tutorial is going to walk you through how to do it. We're basically doing a modified version for the 9.2 scenario onto the planes. It's a one period uh, of, the, of the history uh, scenario so it plays moderately fast. It's probably the fastest playing uh, of the scenarios. Uh, you're going to want to find the yellow and green uh, colonial enemy markers. Those are the square markers like you see here. It says enemy space on them. Um, there's one for, uh, for the south which is green. There's one for the west which is yellow. Uh, you want the one that has the burgundy cross on it. That means that Spain is the colonial enemy in the west and in the south. Uh, there's no need to put an enemy marker in the east at this time. Uh, you can just kind of leave those set aside. The east will get a colonial enemy at some point. Uh, and just go ahead and find the gray enemy space marker and put it up here in the, the gray square enemy space on the map. So uh, those, are the, those are just going to you know, tell you who's the enemy in those particular locations. Um, what you probably want to do is pause the video at this point and then read section 1.2 of the rule book before you continue because that's really going to walk you through what the uh, the various colonial enemies, what is that all about. That'll be explained in the, the glossary section there, 1.2 of the rule book. So go ahead and pause the video here and then we'll come back to that. Okay, so as you saw in section 1.2 of the rule book, uh, there's lots of important definitions in that particular rule. 1.2 1 has all these definitions. It's uh, We didn't put an index in the game. Um, 
we, we instead put an in tried to put an in-depth glossary in its place. So that's that's really your go-to. If you find a word you're really not sure, you think it, it, it's important, it means something, section 1.2 is where you want to go. Uh, so we got a bunch more pieces to put into uh, play here. So uh, one of the things you'll notice on the counter sheets is there is a bunch of counters that have a question mark on the back of it. I'll show you here in the Vassal module. They look something like this. And then on the reverse side, you'll see some of them say success, some of them say enemy APs, etc. Um, you want to go ahead and, and set those aside. There's, there's 21 of them in a set. It's a very, very important part of the game, the success check draw cup. So there are, excuse me, there are 22 of those counters. So there's 10 that say success, there's 5 that say 4 enemy APs, there's 3 of them that say, excuse me, there's 4 of them that say 3 enemy APs, and then there's uh, 3, 2 enemy AP markers. So uh, total of 22 of those success check counters. Now we had enough space in the counter sheets, so we went ahead and included two sets of those. Make sure you don't mingle the two together. Uh, how you can tell them apart is one set looks exactly like you see here in Vassal. Uh, the other set is slightly discolored. The, the interior of the question mark is more of a tan color and it's also it also says something on the sprues of the counter sheet so just make sure you don't mingle the two the reason for the extra set is uh, to enhance the longevity of your game obviously these counters are going to get handled more than any other piece and so the you know with time they're going to wear out and uh, so including a second set just gives you extra life on your game so go ahead and you're going to want to put those aside into like a clean, empty coffee mug. Make sure it's empty. Uh, I remember at a game conference <laughs> convention one time I accidentally uh, I accidentally dumped a whole bunch of cubes that was supposed to go into a draw cup and I dumped them into a glass that wasn't exactly empty. So anyways, don't do that. Ever since that time I have learned to check to make sure it is a clean, empty receptacle. So... Next thing you want to do is you want to set up the enemy instruction display, and it's really straightforward how to do this. There's uh, four sets of instruction markers. They are color coded: yellow for west, green for south. Uh, the east is blue. The the north is gray. If you are color blind. I was told that this should not be an issue for you. If it is, just post something on Twitter or Facebook. Um, uh, board game geek, get a hold of me in some way. We'll we'll find some way to to let you know. We didn't want to clutter up the counters any, uh, so I was told that these should work for you. Uh, so what we want to do here is we want to organize these according to colors. So the yellow markers go in the yellow squares for west, and the green markers go into the green column for south. And you're going to put them in alphabetic order with A at the top and F at the bottom. You will also know in your game that there is a G counter for each of the four enemies. And you're not going to do anything with those right now. Uh, the gray uh, G instruction is going to go into the draw cut, but only after you've done at least one passage of time. And that's really a play balance mechanic because of it were to be pulled early you could lose the game very quickly and so we decided to give the player a little bit of an oomph and uh, so what we can do as a reminder is I just tell people to put it up here onto the passage of time uh, or on the uh, operations track so when you do your first passage of time operation uh, that'll just be a signal to put that into the draw cup so that's pretty much the uh, the how to set up the instruction display. So that's that's pretty straightforward stuff. Uh, you want to find the round uh, passage of time and operations markers. You're gonna want to put those uh, right here in the start space on the operations track. So go ahead and do that. You're gonna find the round culture points and military points counters. Put those into the three on the general record track. Uh, the APs, these are your player action points. Uh, put that into the one space on the general record track. And the MPs marker and available enemy APs square marker go into zero. The only function of this particular piece is just to serve as a mnemonic device when you're moving a counter and you're lo it would be easy to lose track of how many movement points you've spent. And so that is an easy way to remember 
uh, is to hold on to that and you can either mark it from zero on up or what I like to do is mark it from my starting MPs on down to zero. So that's, that's the only function of that counter there. All right, so that's pretty much the, the core um, pieces for the enemy instruction display the, and the record tracks. So I'm going to ask you to pause the video uh, right here and watch, uh, excuse me, read section 1.3.1 uh, in the rule book before we continue. Okay, so now you know a little bit about the map. If you read section 1.3.1, you're going to understand a little bit about the map. So the rest of the setup should go uh, pretty straightforward. You're going to find the, uh, the hexagon-shaped counters, and uh, we're going to start putting a bunch of those on the map, and it'll look just like you see here on the screen. You'll find the, uh, the Rancheria with the A on it, the, the hexagonal rentry A piece, put it into the round map space that says Upper Arkansas number one. So he's going to go right up there. That's our starting rancheria. And in just a couple minutes, we're going to populate that with some bands and some horses, etc. Uh, next thing we're going to do is put all of the, the gray hexagonal tribe markers. If you don't know what these are, uh, flip them over. It says tribe on the other side. In Vassal, there's no flip function. Um, but all of the gray hexagonal markers represent tribes, other native people, other First Nations tribes that are not of the Comanche. So you're going to put one into Upper Arkansas, number four and number five, Rio Grande, numbers one, two, five and six, so that's one, two, five and six. The Lano Estacado, uh, just one in, the, in, in area two and in area six. Uh, I see I transposed those. Um, the Brazos, Colorado, uh, no, you're gonna put one here into the two space and into the four space. And Red River gets one, uh, one in each of one, two and three, as well as in five. Lower Arkansas numbers one, two, and three. So when you finish with that, then you will have, I believe, one uh, tribe marker is going to be left over. And I keep forgetting to put that into Vassal. It's a very rare occurrence that that is going to come into play, but it, it is theoretically possible and it's included. So you would put the extra uh, piece down here into the out of play box. So. Next thing we're going to do is all of these round spaces on your game need a bison. Uh, all of the empty round spaces on the map need to get a bison counter, so find all of the, uh, uh, the bison counters. And basically all of the bison counters in the game are going to go on the map in some place. The only space on the map that should be empty, there's three of them, is the Palo Duro Canyon space. And the enemy space for the east up here in the north should be empty. And the enemy space in the south here in the east should also be empty because there is no colonial enemy in the east. And generally when you put a uh, colonial marker in the east, you're going to put it into the southern one rather than into the northern one. Uh, just to designate who is in command of, of the enemy in the east. So at this point, that your map should look just like you see on the screen when you are done with this. So go ahead and do that. Next thing you're going to want to do is take all of the resource counters. These are going to be slightly the smaller counters, the same size as the bison. And you're going to put all the horses, the food, the captives, trade goods, guns. You're going to put them all into available resources. If the out-of-play area is too crowded, uh, I, I'd like to, with my physical copy of the game, actually put my warrior bands down here into available resources because this box actually holds them a little bit better than this box. So go ahead and just sort all those pieces and put them into the available uh, resources. Find the yellow, green, and blue hexagonal settlement counters. Put them all into out of play. 
Uh, in fact, if you're just going to go through the tutorial, there really isn't even a need for these pieces because they're never going to enter play in this particular scenario. Well, they would only happen if you were playing the campaign or one of the later periods of the game. So you could theoretically leave these out as well as leave these out. But for the sake of getting into the habit of, of setting up the game, assuming you're going you're gonna to play the full campaign, this is where they would go at this time. You're going to want to find all of the warrior bands. There's three, three strength bands that have the numbers three and four on the, the reverse side. You're going to put them into either out of play or into available resources. Uh, there are five uh, that say two. These are two strength bands with a movement rating of five. You're going to place those as well. Um, two of them are going to go into out of play. The rest of them are actually going to come up here. and We're going to populate a rancheria in just a minute. Uh, and then the one strength bands, I believe we got eight of those. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, that's right. So you're going to put those into out of play, just get them all sorted out. Ravage counters in Vassal, they're up here. Um, I like to just put them into this space. I just kind of pile them up or into here. So go ahead and, and put all the Ravage counters. The War Column Strength Counters. Uh, the only ones you're going to need in this scenario really are the uh, the, the gray tribal ones, the yellow uh, with the uh, the burgundy cross, the Spanish war column strength count counters uh, for the west and for the south. So the green one with the burgundy cross, those are really the only ones you're going to need for the tutorial. The ones with the Mexican flag, Texas flag, and the United States flag, those can be left uh, in the baggies or whatever you're using to sort counters. So you can just actually set those aside. What I do with my physical copy is I arrange them uh, along the perimeter of the board. So either along the bottom edge or my preference is to put them along this edge. I just kind of I just kind of put them in a row so I can just quickly grab them. That's that's just my preference on it. So all right, go ahead and uh, we're gonna we're gonna have you pause one more time here and read all of section 2.5 and 2.6 of the rule book before we continue, and then we'll wrap up the first video in this series when we finish. Okay, so now that you've finished reading section 2.5 and 2.6, you have an idea of how the Rancheria display works. It's a lot like the family displays in Navajo Wars. Uh, we positioned it here uh, on the upper right-hand side for, for ergonomic benefit. And uh, they notice that they are arranged alphabetically to correlate with the hexagonal pieces, just like the families did in Navajo Wars. Uh, what you'll want to do, though, is, is just be aware that uh, A is at the bottom and E is at the top. And so what I like to do is I'll, I like to, to put all my, the pieces that are not in play for these rancherias, I'll just put them all into the resources box for that rancheria. Um, but let's go ahead and start by populating rancheria A. We're going to put three two-strength bands in there, and we're going to put four horses in there and then we're going to find the three headman markers for Rancheria A. There's a red Mahimiana marker uh, that said, has a letter A on it that matches our Rancheria and you're going to put him in here. It's the guy, it's the, the counter with Quana Parker, darker shade goes in here. The lighter shade one says medicine and that's just a, a measurement of his cap leadership capabilities and it's going to be going on this track here in the two space. And then we're going to find our Paribos medicine. There is no other counter to represent this man other than his leadership rating. Basically, he is uh, he's a part of the Rancheria. He never leaves this location here. And it's just his leadership that we track on here with the medicine counter. So go ahead and organize those on your copy just like you see on the screen here. Next, you're going to find all of the, uh, the other hexagonal markers, uh, B, C, D, and E, and as well as the three headman counters for each of those rancherias. And you're just going to go ahead and park them into the resources box of each of those rancherias. So that's just a holding place to show that those rancherias are available to us, but they are not yet in play. 
So can a rancheria be removed um, so it's, it's no longer uh, accessible to us? That will happen late in the game, and it will be happening here in this space, the reservation. Once a hexagonal counter comes in here, it, it's, it's in there for the rest of the game. So uh, there we go. The game is set up. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the video here. This is a good stopping point for video number one. And uh, what I'd like for you to do before watching the next video is pause this, uh, you know, pause your reading here. Read sections 1.33, 1.34, 1 1.35, and 1.36 in the rule book before continuing. That's going to help you to uh, understand the, the cards in the game. And once you've read those sections, watch the next video and we'll pick things up from there.